Welcome to the latest video from the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery, brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We're getting techie again. Hey. Oh, no. That means Charles. <laughs> Oops. We are talking about Flourish Excel, which is a product from one of our favorite companies, Seachem. We love those guys over there. And one of our favorite lines of products from every company. Oh, yeah. Like the Flourish line, we use so much here. Yes. Yeah. So Flourish Excel. So going into this, this was a required me to brush up on my biochemistry. Nice. <laughs> good. Um, Always some good light reading, right? <laughs> oh, so easy. But uh, going into this product, a lot of people assume it's a liquid CO2 substitute. Right. It is not that. It right. is a organic carbon source, which is good. very different. <laughs> it's almost as if it is a bioavailable carbon for the plants and aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a replacement for a CO2 system. Right. Yes. And theoretically, I would argue that, so I'm not 100% sure anyone actually knows what the like microchemistry, biological, what it's doing in the plant. Okay. But it works. So doing what? So there are a couple mechanisms that people have proposed. A lot of people seem to think that this is being used as a substitute for photosynthetic intermediaries during the Calvin cycle. Okay, okay. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of words. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's what it's doing, okay. because that doesn't quite make sense to me, but I think it's doing something else much cooler Okay. and much more interesting and much more controllable. So let's look at this uh, active ingredient, polycycloglutaralcetyl. That's a big word. So... <laughs> yes, <laughs> that word could feed a small family. <laughs> so it is either, it's an isometric polymer. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> no, it is. Let me pause here, because this is another big word. It is a isometric polymer of glutar aldehyde, as in, okay. It is an aldehyde, as in okay. formaldehyde. All right. Yeah. So a lot of people look at this and go, oh, glutar aldehyde. I can buy that because it's a commonly available medical disinfectant. Okay, first off, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I see that recommended on forums all the time as an, an algae killer, right? Yes, yeah. but Seacom has gone through to great lengths to make a product that is safer for you and your plants by turning it into an isometric polymer. <laughs> okay, S turning it into something safe and we don't know. Yeah, right. so the joke I made earlier was like people looking at this and saying, oh, it's like this. I can use that instead. Mm -hmm. It would be like getting a prescription for Adderall and basically going, oh, that's basically meth. I can dose myself with meth. And I'm like, <laughs> no, that's not no. how chemistry works. Yeah, close enough doesn't get you that far it's in chemistry. Close enough is kind of a big deal. Yeah. yeah right. So glitter <laughs> aldehyde is used as a microorganism killer. And I do think that's what it's doing here, okay? Because what I think is happening is it's killing, each leaf of a plant has a microfilm of algae on it. I think this kills that microfilm, and that means the plant on the cellular level is no longer competing for those resources now. Uh, Isn't that cool? From my experience, this works the best as an algicide, and that lines up pretty well with what you're trying yeah. to say. Yeah, and I'm arguing that I 100% believe everyone's saying this helps their plants grow. Sure. I have no reason to think that it doesn't. Mm -hmm. right. I just don't think it's the mechanism that we've all assumed it to be. Like, <laughs> like this might just be a, a myth we've destroyed. Yeah. yeah. And I honestly think that knowing what I know now, I think my hypothesized mechanism yeah. is cooler than the one the average hobbyist thinks is happening. I, I don't yeah. disagree with you there, you know, and our relationship with Flores Excel has kind of been a roller coaster. Do right. we like it? Are we scared of it? Do we love it? Do we hate it? 
do we want to use it? Do we want to say, no, it's bad? Yeah. This kind of puts it all into perspective of a, it has its place and there are reasons to use it. Yeah. And it's great at doing right. what it's, I think it's what intended it's, to do. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yes. But yes. I don't think that it takes the place of any other product. It has its own unique place in the hobby yeah. and in our planted aquariums. Yeah. It's not the place that Seachem Flourish takes off. This is not the excelling version of Flourish. This is its own thing. It does not take up the place that gaseous CO2 that we're injecting takes up. It takes up the Flourish Excel place. So, like and I would argue, yeah, you're right. This is not a fertilizer. This is not a, I, I wouldn't say it's a supplement. Mm -hmm. I would say that what it's doing is allowing your plants to more readily access the nutrients that are already in your system by removing a competitor. So we could yeah. maybe call it a treatment. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's not false advertising. Everything on this, we just read it before we started, lines up with exactly what you're saying. And if you yeah. go on the Seachem site, you can read their frequently asked questions and they will, without revealing proprietary secrets that they've spent a lot of time and money coming up with, they will explain, hey, these are the plants that it seems like it doesn't do well with. These, this is what it can be used for, and this is when it should not be used. Um, and fun fact, if you really want to know about like some of the, like, if you want, if you're really chemistry inclined and you yeah. want an idea of what it probably is, then that's how I managed to backtrack what I think is happening mm -hmm. here. Um, if you go to their tab and it'll say safety, if you click on that, you will get a PDF of, it's called an MSDS sheet. Oh, yeah. So a safety sheet. Yeah, material yeah. safety data sheet. And it yeah. basically is like, all right, so this is what happens if it gets in your eye, or this is what happens if... Yeah. And I think I'm saying that saying, I think that'll scare a lot of people. Right. But if you ever looked at like what the MSDS sheet for uh, bleach is, like... Way scary. Way, way scary. <laughs> well, and if you buy this product from Seachem for that purpose, you will get that, you will get this documentation. If you order it from someone who's not selling it for planted aquariums, they're not gonna have the safety information that is required. Just, yeah. just get the thing that we know works. And <laughs> don't use glutaraldehyde because yeah. a, a, I don't feel comfortable diluting that and I have several years of chemical experience <laughs> and I don't think the average hobbyist should be doing that in their home because theoretically to do that safely you need it. Hume hood, and I can tell you that I don't know anyone that owns one of those. <laughs> oh, I have one. Yeah. <laughs> but there is another added benefit to this product. Okay. So it promotes the ferric state of it promotes the ferrous state of iron. Yeah, I read okay. this and I did not know what that meant. I love iron and iron fertilization. It helps my plants grow, but how does this actually do anything for it? So. I am not that good at chemistry, <laughs> but basically what's happening is, is that there are different states of iron that it can fluctuate between. Mm -hmm. And you know how we've talked about how in acidic conditions, there's a equilibrium between hydrogen ions and water. Yeah. yeah. And you can skew that in different directions with different things. Right. This is a thing that skews this in the direction of, and make sure I say this right, ferrous iron versus ferric iron, which is a big- Dissolved versus not dissolved, essentially, right? Which is a big deal yeah. because plants can take up ferrous, ferrous state iron. Right. And yeah. ferric is going to settle out as a precipitate. Yes. Right. So if you're, you know, spending money on, I don't know, dosing ferric, <laughs> like iron into your tank, mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe not a bad second to the hiding. Right, I like it. Honestly, you've kind of sold me. I don't use Excel, and it's one thing that I've told people that they don't need. I even like went on a little bit of a tangent about it in a podcast that we recently um, that we recently recorded. But and I, can I interrupt? That's I, what inspired me to do yeah. research on this. Because I was like, because like, I realized I have no idea. It's what a this secret does. product. Right? I know. Like, it can't be bad. It, it shouldn't be. Yeah. I know how well they do, so it's always been baffling to me why they have this product that everybody says should replace CO2, and it doesn't make any sense in that context. Yeah. In this context, 
I kind of want it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to probably like start it. using it. I think that there's a certain tank with Madagascar lace plant that's got some yeah. black beard algae growing on it that you, you might want to see. That we dose iron do. pretty heavily in because <laughs> it's Madagascar lace and it loves it. Yeah. Cool. I like it. That's awesome. I like that this one. That was awesome, Charles. Thank you. That's a, a great reason to use Excel for what it is intended to be used yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> Always keep it fun and keep those hands wet. <laughs>